Hi guys, Mark Heath here and today we're going to be looking at solving day 19 of the Advent of Code Challenge in both C Sharp and F Sharp. And one of the things that I was a little bit concerned about when I embarked on this challenge was maybe we would reach the point where the puzzles got too difficult for me to solve. And in a way today was sort of one of those days, although I have got my two gold stars. And there was a bit of a clue when I woke up. I didn't wake up particularly early, but there were still five slots on the leaderboard yet to be filled up. And that's very unusual because normally the leaderboard of the quickest hundred people for that day fills up in about 20 minutes. But today it was almost four hours before the first hundred people had managed to solve it. So a lot of people were struggling today. Let's have a look at the problem, see why it was so difficult. So it's all about mutating molecules today. And so a molecule is a string and you can mutate it by changing substrings into other substrings. And so in this example, you can change H's into Ho's or to O's and O's into HH's. And so that means that if you've got a starting molecule of HOH, then by making just a single mutation from these lists, then there are four distinct possibilities that you could mutate it into. And so the challenge was, given a bunch of replacements, and here's my input file with all the replacements that I can make, and a starting molecule, which is quite a lengthy string, how many distinct molecules can I make by mutating it through one step? So that didn't sound too hard to me, that first part of it. And I actually decided for the first time I would begin by solving it in F sharp. So I will show you some C sharp code later, but let's look at how I solve part A in F sharp first. I made a function called mutate, which takes the string of the current state of the molecule and a list of all the replacements from and to strings in a tuple. And then we go through each position in the start in the input string, starting from position zero right up to the end, and see if we can make any of the replacements at that position. So does the substring of the input string start with the replacement? And if so, we will yield a string that has the replacement made. And we can do that with this kind of substring methods on strings in .NET. And so the next challenge was obviously to parse the input data. I needed to read all the lines out of the input file, split it on space, and because the input file has got the molecule at the end, I needed to filter out only the ones where there were two spaces in the line, and that meant it was a replacement line. And so I could map the first and last parts of that line as the from and to parts of the replacement. And the molecule, of course, is the last line in the file. So that was easy to get. Then all we need to do to solve part A was to call this mutate function with the medicine molecule and the replacements, pass it into seek.distinct, um, which I guess is probably doing something like using a set under the hood to give us distinct elements. Then we're seeing how many elements are in that sequence with seek.length and printing out the answer. And so that was nice and simple. I got to part A solution quite quickly, probably 20, 20 minutes or so. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I'm going to do this much quicker than everyone else. And then I looked at part B. And part B of these problems has in the past been relatively kind but today part B's was really quite challenging. So what did we have to do in part B? Well what we were asked was if we just started with a molecule of E how many mutations and we perform all mutations using the replacements we have here how many mutations does it take to get to this molecule? And as you can see from the length of the molecule, there's going to be a lot of mutations required to get there. And there may be more than one way to do it. And so the challenge wasn't just to find one way to do it, but to find the quickest way to do it. So now you may know that so far in this 
series of advent of code challenges a number of them could be solved by brute force you can think of the traveling santa problem and the seating people around the table problem and the dividing eggnog between containers problem all of those could be solved by just going through every single possible combination and checking it in some way and on all of those days i tried to optimize my answer which usually makes for more complicated code but much better performing code however today i found it quite hard to think of what the best way to optimize this was so i thought you know what i will just go for brute force and so i started off very foolishly starting with the e on its own performing every possible mutation on that and from all of the resulting molecules performing every possible mutation on those and of course that was just going to take forever i was never going to get to my target molecule and so i decided to try the opposite approach and start with the target molecule and try replacing backwards taking bits out until we got back to just an e and i did that algorithm it worked absolutely fine on the short test input that we're kindly given in these problem descriptions but when i ran it on the real input it was insanely slow and that was probably again because i wasn't doing it in the most intelligent way i was making all of the replacements possible on the whole molecule and then from all of those molecules with one replacement making all of the possible next replacements so it was taking me ages just to get to the point of reducing any molecule down to a single character and i guess i could have carried on and tried to come up with a few more intelligent approaches but do you know what today i didn't have loads and loads of time to work on this and i thought to myself why don't i let go of my pride and have a look at how some other people are tackling the problem see if that gives me some inspiration and so sure enough i had a look on the subreddit and there were some very interesting approaches i think probably the algorithm that you would say is the correct approach to this problem is called the a star algorithm and you can look that up on wikipedia if you're interested in it but there was one guy's solution that stood out as being surprisingly simple and i wasn't even sure if it would work at all when i first looked at it but I had a bit more of a think about it and I'll show you what it is this guy um, goes on reddit by the name of what a baller and his solution was in Python but I've converted it here to F sharp and what you do is you take the molecule you're looking you're starting with and the list of replacements and you say that your target is that molecule initially and that you've made no mutations and then while your target variable isn't equal to e which is what we're trying to reduce it to we try all of the replacements on that molecule in order so we just go through each replacement and if we can do a single replacement then we do it and if we have done one we up our mutations now once we've tried every possible replacement on that molecule if we haven't changed it at all so none of the replacements worked then we start again and we actually shuffle the replacements to try them in a different order however if we did manage to replace something or other then we'll go round again we'll try all of the mutations and we'll see if we can change anything and we keep going until we get to e okay so it's an interesting algorithm and when i ran it I was amazed to find that in a fraction of a second it had got an answer out a way of going from the original molecule all the way down to e in for me 195 steps and i so i plugged that in and it was the right answer it got my second gold star but of course is this really the right solution because it's just finding one way of mutating from the original molecule down to e there could be many ways and as you can see here from a little test I did, I made up just a fake problem where you start with a molecule of four X's and there are two ways to get to E. One is to do it in one step and the other is to do it, it goes to two Y's and then the two Y's turn into an E, so three steps. And if I run his algorithm with the 
instructions in this order, it will give me an answer of three, whereas if I run it with the instructions reversed, then I'll get an answer of one. And so it's not really the right answer, but I did like this because it was a clever answer. And sometimes in programming, you do have to make shortcuts and compromises. In fact, a lot of the people's answers on Reddit were about looking at the input and thinking about it and cutting down the search space in clever ways. You could arguably make this better by saying that we will always sort the replacement strings by the longest first, which would give us a much higher chance of getting the right answer out. I don't think it would guarantee, I haven't thought through this long enough, but I don't think it would guarantee you'd get the right answer, but it would certainly give you a very good chance given the type of input we have. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this in C sharp. As I said, I did the F sharp first today. I didn't do it very differently in C sharp. Here's the C sharp version of my mutate function for part A. And I take very much the same approach apart from I use this nice link query expression syntax, which works very well for this type of problem. For each position in the string, try all the replacements and then we can return all of those replacements as an i enumerable of string. And so part A is very easy to solve. For part B, I just used a simpler shuffle implementation than the Fisher Yates one that I used for F sharp. But the search method, again, is the same one. We're going to just keep going, trying to make all the replacements at least once, and then go around and make all the replacements at least once again until we reach E. And so here you can see where I parse my input file for part A, we call my mutate function and just count the distinct elements. And for part B, we just return what this algorithm that we just talked about gives us, which happens to be the shortest path, even though it isn't necessarily, the algorithm doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll get the shortest path. And so there we have it. That's a solution to day 19 maybe that doesn't leave you feeling completely satisfied and you would prefer to do it a more a more correct way if so leave it a comment and tell me what your preferred solution would be thanks for watching and hopefully day 20 won't be quite as taxing i'll see you tomorrow